Hi folks, Chris Anderson with Mount Comfort RV. Spring has sprung in the Midwest and we are back to doing videos. So we're in a 2018 Dutch Star 4369. No surprise there, I think you all know that's my favorite. Um, first and foremost, we're gonna start with the inside. I, just trying something new here. If you like that, if you prefer we do the inside or the outside first, let us know which way you like it and uh, that will determine how we do this in the future. So this is just kind of an experimental, uh, experimental shot right here. Don't forget to like and subscribe uh, to our page so you see these videos when they pop up and that does help us and most importantly don't forget to ask for me when you have RV questions and certainly when you want to buy an RV. All right, let's get started. Obviously, the slides are in right now. We are in a 2018 Dutch Star 4369. Obviously, we have the cherry wood cabinetry, which is gorgeous. Uh, the beautiful tile floor. This is pretty close to how I was telling Tony a minute ago. This is pretty close to how I would order one. Uh, just um, I love the colors in this. I obviously love the floor plan. I like the two chair uh, arrangement. One of the reasons I like the two chair arrangement is because unlike a sofa, you can turn these to the side like we have them now and leave yourself a pretty decent aisle way down through here there's 14 to 18 inches right there that you can go through and uh, you really don't have any choke points through this coach of course you have the door that pivots in the middle here so you can easily get into the bathroom obviously you can easily access the refrigerator the pantry all of that as well so good walk space on a 4369 if you get it set up right you do have to have some forethought when you're closing it up as to uh, how much aisle space you want to have if you're just making a quick trip maybe you don't worry about turning the chairs sideways and th this will be a little tighter in here but obviously if you're going to be on the road for a little while this makes things a little easier your call let's get the slides opened up we'll be right back Okay, we're back in the 2018 Dutch Star 4369. Let's start in the cockpit area. First thing to notice here, uh, we did option in the Spartan chassis. We like both Spartan and Freightliner. They both build a great product. This particular one is built on a Spartan chassis. So if you have questions about some of the little differences and stuff between those, they're pretty comparable all in all, but there, there are some differences. And like I said, we, we went with Sparty on this one. Um, nice viewability of the gauge cluster here. Just like uh, all of our Numar diesels, we do have the uh, infinite positions on the tilt wheel. Um, so many of your coaches out there, even high-end coaches, have that little cog down here on the side of the column. And the problem with that is you have like five positions and you know maybe this one isn't comfortable and this one's down too far to where you can't see your gauges, your steering wheel's blocking your gauges. Nice part about this infinite position uh, telescoping wheel is no matter where I stop it, I take my foot off, it's good and it does also telescope as well. So you just kind of push that pedal in with your left foot, get it exactly where you want it. And even if you moved it the teeniest, tiniest amount, it will stay there. So that's one we like to talk about. Of course, we do have smart wheel, which means I have uh, windshield wiper controls, intermittent controls. I can flash my lights, set my cruise control, all of this right at, turn on my high beams, all of this right here without taking my hands off the wheel, which is obviously very important. Dual cup holders on the left hand side. You can see my parking brake control is up here on the dash, power and heated mirrors, headlight controls over here. Step back just a little bit. One thing we have right here is this switch. You don't see this on that many motorhomes. That's a power window. Uh, it's surprising to me how few of motorhomes actually have a power window, but the Dutch Star does. It's nice when you're going through a toll booth or something like that, you're not dealing with that screen and that slider window. Um, we have our tag dump switch right here where you can manually dump the tag axle. It will do it automatically um, if you're in reverse um, and uh, you're in a, a loose gravel situation, you're in reverse, uh, it'll automatically dump the tag if you leave it in the automatic position. Our engine brake switch is here and we have a three-speed engine brake on here. So this turns it off and on. This determines how much engine brake we're getting, low, medium, or high. We have our HWH hydraulic fully automatic leveling system. To level this coach, you simply hit the auto level button. It will dump all the air out of the bags to bring us as close to the ground as possible. And then the hydraulic jacks will bring us up to a level position and stabilize us. And we have a little USB port back here, a little dual USB port back here as well. So if you have anything tele cell phone wise or any other uh, GPS that plugs in USB, any of that stuff, you can actually um, have that on this side of you or in the middle, doesn't really matter. Move over to the center console here. Of course, we have a color backup monitor, um, very crystal clear, and that has side cameras built in as well that are turn signal activated. So when you're changing lanes, it makes it very nice to see if there's a little car hiding in your blind spot. We did option in uh, the Excite radio package with the uh, 
uh, Rand McNally, you couldn't think of the name there from it, with the Rand McNally maps. Um, the nice part about the Rand McNally uh, navigation system is that you can actually program in your size. So, you know, I'm 12 feet, 10 inches tall, I'm eight and a half feet wide, I'm 43 feet long, et cetera, et cetera. And it won't take you down any low bridges or any areas where you shouldn't go with a motorhome. People in the trucking industry have been using this for years. We've been begging for it in the RV industry. Newmar finally uh, gave this to us, so that's a, that's a big deal. This is a touchscreen radio. Of course, it's uh, Sirius ready um, for, for satellite radio. It's Bluetooth, it's all those good things. So um, I, I think that has about everything you, you would want there. We do have the Comfort Drive system, of course, a Newmar exclusive steering system and there'll be another video linked at the bottom of the page that tells you all of that. Um, if you're on our YouTube page, you can you can search for the Comfort Drive video. If you're on our mountcomfortrv.com site looking at this, it should be right next to where you found this video. There'll be a Comfort Drive video that talks about that. Since all the Newmar diesels have it, I got tired of talking about it, so we made one video and we um, it, it applies to all. We do have automotive style pedals here instead of the trucker style pedals down low and they are adjustable so you can uh, adjust those for uh, shorter or taller people uh, just with the press of a button here on the dash. All of our uh, blinds, both the night shades that you see here and the day shades are powered throughout this entire coach so that's very very nice. Controls for blinds, overhead fans, um, even how much heat we want from the main heating system of the coach up here in this area are, are up here in the front as well as I can lock and unlock my entry door right here. Um, that's, that's really handy although new feature for 2018 is that it does lock when you drop it into gear. It locks your entry door. They've done that for a while but new for 2018 is it also locks all your compartment doors which is really slick. So that's a little bit about the cockpit area. We do have a little storage here. I missed that and our HVAC controls are right here in the middle as well as another uh, port. On the passenger side, let's hit that real quick. We do have a nice cup holder over here. Controls for the main light when you walk in, you can just hit this light and it will turn the overhead light on. That's nice when you're coming up the step well to be able to light up your coach. Um, map lighting, step cover where I, I'm standing in the step well right now. So the step cover switch um, will cover that up so there's a nice flat floor there. And then we can lock and unlock the compartment doors with this switch down here. And this one over here on the left um, actually turns on the compartment lights. So uh, it's a master switch for those as you open the outside compartments, uh, the coach will light up like a refrigerator does. Both driver and passenger seats do rotate and they both have the the leg incliner here so they're, they're like uh, kind of like a little lazy boy uh, and they are heated seats in the Dutch Star. They're power heated seats so a little bit about um, our cockpit area there. I know I've probably bored some of you. You really want to see what this floor plan is all about so Tony and I are going to rotate. Welcome home. We have the two recliners set up. Now you can do a sofa here as well um, in this floor plan. This is the way I like it. Uh, I think it's great for two people, which is who is usually buying a coach of this oak, just two people looking to get away that don't have guests on a regular basis, so they don't need the extra sleeping of, of another sofa. Nice table in between with storage and uh, the two beautiful recliners. These are, these are Lambright recliners. They are extremely comfortable, well-built chairs, and they are, of course, directly facing the television. Our television is on a televator. Hit that button there and right on cue our TV jumps up in front of the window. So if it's during the day you want the window you open up the blind you're looking right out on your patio side. If it's nighttime, you want to uh, sit down and watch the news, watch a movie, whatever, you hit the button and uh, you have a wonderful, wonderful Sony TV jumping up there. This is what we call a fold and tumble sofa here. It does fold out um, with an air mattress to sleep two people and it's a pretty comfortable bed. So that's nice. You still have sleeping for four very comfortably in this coach and that's not counting if you wanted to throw an air mattress on the floor or something along those lines. Notice this coach has no carpet in it. This is a flat floor slide. Newmar came out with this in 15 on the Dutch Star on up to where even our slide outs do not have carpet. How nice is that? Beautiful all solid hardwood. When I say solid hardwood, I'm not talking about what most coaches have, which is a nice wood door, and then they use some sort of wrapped wood right here. Nothing wrong with that, but in the Dutch Star level, you are paying for the next step up. This is all real wood. This is not wrapped wood. This is actual stained hardwood. So. Um, beautiful as you, as you go throughout this coach. The, the cherry is, is, is I think their 
their most stunning wood. I always warn people, listen, expect some highs and lows, some natural hallmarks in the cherry product that you don't get in other woods. If you don't like some natural highs and lows, don't get the cherry because it's gonna have it. I see a perfect spot to demonstrate this right now. Let's look right up here with the camera. Okay, there's, there's a, a really light cherry. There's a no, more of a medium cherry right there, right next to each other. Every coach that has the cherry will have little areas in that uh, to, to illustrate, um, just like I said, the natural highs and lows of cherry wood. This is not stained. Um, th this is just cherry wood in its natural color. Over time, it does darken a little bit, but that's what cherry is all about. Like I said, if that bothers you, if having those, uh, I love it, but if, if having those natural highs and lows bother you at all, don't get cherry. Get to pick, pick another wood. So uh, there we go. Let's move on. Of course, all of this is Corian through here. This is all cut, wet sanded, polished by Numar in-house. 30 inch convection microwave. So that serves as your oven or your microwave, either one. It's actually a much better oven than those little gas ovens are. You can cook a lot more evenly with this and it's a real residential microwave. So under here, we have a dual induction cooktop. It is removable. You could actually take that outside with you if you wanted to. One big stainless sink with a little bit of RV antifreeze down inside. Beautiful faucet, and that does have the pull down sprayer on it as well. All right, I know, especially in the kitchen area, we wanna see the storage, so. Oh, I forgot one, here we go. Let's see, we'll pop this out. There we go, couldn't find the button. Let's look at all the storage. I'm just gonna open it up and let Tony do the filming. Nice pullouts above and below. I love the trash can spot. So many coaches, you struggle for a spot to put a trash can. All right, let me put the kitchen back together. All right, so we don't leave this area without going over some storage in here. Let me get some of the overheads in here as well. You can see these cabinets above on the uh, driver's side of the coach. These cabinets above the chairs and the uh, dinette are lined, which is nice. Lined cabinets, uh, People don't think about it, but stuff tends to rattle in here. If you haven't owned a motorhome, you don't think about it. If you have owned a motorhome, you're well aware of what I'm talking about. But the lined cabinets certainly act as a very good sound deadener and keep stuff from sliding around. In the front overhead, Little bitty storage cubby, that's kind of over the, the entry door. And then in this area, we actually have all of your controls for the coach. Let's go over that. Just go panel by panel here and explain what we see. Um, this covers our entrance door awning. That's the little awning over the door and the light at the entrance door uh, with that awning. So that's the little awning. We have security lights on the driver and passenger side. They are here. We have a block heater switch. The block heater switch, if, you, if it's a cold uh, night and you're leaving in the morning, you'd wanna come out, plug your coach in or turn the generator on and turn on your block heater. That's going to get that engine block warmed up so that your coach starts easily. It's also less wear and tear on your engine to have a warm block as opposed to a cold one. Entry step on and off. Now that controls whether or not your entry, your entry step uh, comes in and out every time you open the door. Um, or once you're at the campsite, if it just stays open. Now there is an override on that to where if the ignition key is on and the door closes, it doesn't matter what position this switch is in, your step is coming in. So if your step is operating properly, there's no way you can leave your step out. 
um, exterior LED lights below the slide room. So that's really nice. Um, a little indirect lighting shines down on the ground. It gives it a really nice look in the campground. Our WineGuard in motion satellite dish. This can be tuned to direct TV or dish network and um, you'll get satellite going down the road. That, that's pretty slick. This coach does have the Oasis system in it. The Oasis is the hydronic heating system. We've talked about that on, uh, there's another video that I'm sure will be linked on our page as well for the hydronic heating system. But this turns the, the diesel burner on and then this turns the electric side on, either AC1 or AC2, one element or two. This system runs off of uh, diesel fuel or electric if you are plugged in. Um, it heats a glycol that circulates throughout the coach. That is what gives us our heat in this coach. That's also what gives us unlimited hot water in this coach. So you can take a 40 minute shower if you have the water capability of it and uh, you won't run out of hot water like you do on other coaches. I could expand on this for hours, but again, there's another video on that. Don't hesitate to click on that. Our control panel over here tells us all sorts of things about how much power is coming into the coach, um, how much uh, power we're using. Uh, this manages our power forces, our energy management system as well. So it doesn't, if we're on a 30 amp service, it doesn't pop the circuit breaker, that type of thing. So that's all controlled through this panel. Step over to here and we'll hit the Numar sign. This gives us a digital readout. Let me take that plastic off. This gives us a digital readout on our tanks. Now, a lot of times um, you don't think about this, but here's our battery level and here's our tank level and it's in percentages. The nice part about it being in percentages is it's so much more accurate. The way most tank levelers historically have worked is you're one third full, you're two thirds full, you're, you're three quarters full, you're full. Uh, I'm sorry, one third, two thirds are full or then one quarter, one half, three fourths and full. Sorry, fractions, it's been a while. Um, the problem with those systems are Let's say your tank is reading three out of four lights are lighting up, it's three-fourths full. The problem with that three-fourths full is you don't know if it's 76% full, which still gives you some time, maybe another day, or it's 98% full. It's still gonna only light up three quarters full. So the the digital readout, you know, will we'll narrow that down for, hey, I'm 78% full, I'm gonna have to dump my tanks, but later today versus 98% full on my gray tank, I need to dump my tanks right now. So nice setup there. Obviously your battery voltage for both, both your house and chassis batteries are on there as well. You have your auto fill switch and your top off switch. If you turn auto fill on, it's going to fill your fresh water tank up for you. The reason for that is you're getting ready, uh, that way when you get ready to leave, your tank will be full uh, going on to the next campground, which is a nice setup. Normally you have to go outside and throw some valves or, or in some cases uh, actually move where your hose is hooked up to on the coach. That will, will do that. And then right before you leave, you can hit the top off button and that's gonna make sure it's absolutely up to its fullest limit. So if, you, if it's been on autofill for a few days, it may, you, it may have dwindled down if you were using any of that tank water. Um, you hit the top off button and it's gonna make sure you're right at the top and then you can unhook and, and be on your way. So the nice feature there. Wine guard, this is our power antenna. Um, for, this is for your over the air television. And you, if you're anywhere near a city, you will get a good HD television just off the over the air antenna. Don't even have to have a satellite service if you don't want one. This is for our Magnum um, inverter. Uh, um, this controls our inverter and our auto generator start, this little guy here, and it does some nice diagnostics as well. Um, an inverter takes power from 12 volt DC current and changes it over to 110 volt, 110, 120 volt AC current. Um, so it turns battery power into household power. That's really neat. Obviously, if, you're, if there's nothing recharging those batteries while this has happened, that's a limited time thing. If you're going down the road, your batteries are charging. So this runs our refrigerator going down the road. The engine powers the, uh, charges the batteries, the batteries supply the inverter, the inverter supplies the refrigerator, it's an endless cycle. You can go on like that forever. When you're dry camping, you have less time, usually 36 to 48 hours, depending on how many other things you run, um, to run your refrigerator. And then if we're running a whole bunch of lights and other things, you would have less time than that. How much less time is what everybody wants to know, and I don't have that answer for you. How many lights are you running? How many TVs are you running off your inverters? How good are your batteries? Were they fully topped off before you started this process? There's a million different things that come into play there, but that's the idea of the inverter. And if you have questions on that, don't hesitate. Uh, I can get much more detailed, but I'm trying not to lose some of the people that aren't detail oriented uh, here, so we'll move on. Auto generator start, or AGS as it's labeled on there. Auto generator start is a nice feature where we can set our generator to come on 
at times and recharge our batteries. So like if you left your coach in storage outdoors somewhere, you could set it to come on at 11.7 volts. Uh, and when it hits that 11.6, it'll, it'll um, start the generator, run for three hours, charge your batteries back up and then shut back off again. Really nice feature. Also, you can set it for certain temperatures in the coach. So if you left a pet or something in here and you're out hiking for the day, you can actually turn that on. To, hey, if it gets to 75 degrees in here, I want the auto generator to start up so the air conditioners can run. You can definitely do that as well. So that's what auto generator start is. These are our controls for our Gerard awnings. We'll come back to Gerard awnings when we do the outside. And then our slide out controls are right here. So lots, this is the, this is the brains of the RV. This is where we do most of our controls for the coach. So that covers that. Let's get back to walking around this coach. We haven't done the dinette yet. Now this is the computer buffet with the pull out table. So this pulls out, there's two more chairs that fold up under the bed. Nice, beautiful Corian all over the place here. And when you're not using it, or if it's just the two of you, you can push this in. By the way, the exterior and interior of this coach is the Sedona package. So for those of you who are looking at the brochures and um, trying to figure out what interiors, what exteriors, this is Sedona, both interior and exterior, and caramel glazed cherry with the matte finish is, is what we're looking at on cabinets. Now we'll move these chairs. Sometimes I glaze over this area and I, and I probably shouldn't. So let's take a look at what we have here. We'll start on this side. Nice little drawer. Another nice little drawer. Down here, a bigger drawer, but notice this is wider. This is set up for a uh, long file filing cabinet. So you can put one of those metal uh, file uh, hangers in there and use that for all your personal files. On this side, we have an adjustable shelf in there. We have an outlet, so it's a great place to put a printer. This folds down. Nice place for a keyboard. Our cords can all be fished right up through there and then under the table sorry Tony we gotta bend over I'm getting too old for this nice adjustable shelf storage underneath so the computer buffet actually has great storage and very useful storage especially if you do some home office stuff out of here oh we did the whole kitchen I forgot to mention the dishwasher this coach has the dishwasher option in it Look at that. Nice drawer dishwasher. Some people love this, some people hate it. You know, one, uh, and nobody's wrong. Some people would rather have the extra two drawers. Some people would rather have the dishwasher. My, my contention, I guess, is, you know what? If you have the dishwasher and you don't want to use it, you can still use it for storage, but you can't use the drawers for a dishwasher. So take that for what it's worth. Nice big Whirlpool refrigerator. And it's locked. There we go. Nice LED lighting in there. Pull out freezer below with an ice maker. All residential, this is a 110 fridge. One of the nice parts about the 4369 is it has one of the bigger pantries um, of all the Numar floor plans. These pull out, these are adjustable in height, so you can raise or lower them depending on what you're putting in here. I love the LED lighting in here this year, it only makes it nice. Take a look at our bathroom. Vessel sink, storage above and below. And then down on the floor, you actually see the central vac. It has two settings there. The bottom thing is a little dust pan that you can kind of activate with your foot and sweep the dirt right into there. Right above it, that's a spot where the hose hooks up. Okay, I'm gonna jump in here and turn the light on for just a second. Let me open up some of the storage and some of the access panels in here so Tony can get a shot of that. All right, and I'll get out of the way. Definitely not room for two people in there. All right, moving on. Sometimes you'll see these little guys throughout the coach and people ask me all the time, what are those? That's tied to your thermostat. That's measuring the temperature back here in the middle of the coach so the thermostat can kind of take, take an account of where we are because it is zoned. So nice feature. Let's head into the bedroom. King size bed. And this is a sleep number bed, by the way. So you'll have the dual control sleep number. They've gone to making the plugs a little easier to get to. 
This is a dual 110 with dual USB. All right, I'm going to open up some of the storage here. We have two nice size wardrobes in a 4369. That's one of the reasons I like the 4369. It's great for full timers or for snowbirders that, that spend a lot of time in the coach because there is a lot of wardrobe storage. We have six drawers down below. Okay, they all look like that. <laughs> Get a good shot of one. Multiply times six, that's what you have. All right, our bed does lift up for storage. There's our two folding chairs as promised. Again, no carpet in the bedroom. We have controls for our blinds in the bedroom, but you can't really see them. They're up under here. That might be a tough shot to get, but Tony's giving it a shot. You have controls for lighting and uh, um, your window blinds, your day and night shades. And then here's our, again, once again, lined cabinetry all the way across the head of the bed there. Okay. Hey, I didn't turn my accent lights on. All right, let's see here. There we go. See, all of these are backlit. Just makes it a much nicer look in here. It's really nice um, get a chance to be in the coaches at night to turn off a lot of the overhead lighting. This, this accent lighting just makes it gorgeous in here. Another plug down here on this nightstand and then storage below. Not much, but Newmar tries to give you every inch. All right, what I think really sells the 4369, quite frankly, is the bathroom. The rear bathroom back here, this is where your, your extra square footage is. And they did a few things that make it nice. Number one, they put the washer dryer closet, which we did option in. We put the washer dryer not on the back wall. There's two places you typically see the washer dryer, either on the back wall where it eats a third of your closet up, or they'll put it someplace in the middle of the coach and it's obviously gonna take away from kitchen space at that point. Neither one of those, for people who spend extended time in RVs, neither one of those are a place where people are willing to give up much as far as storage space goes. The shower, it was the biggest shower um, in the lineup before and they made it bigger this year. It is huge. I mean, seriously, I could fit three of me in here. I mean, it's just, it, it's crazy. Beautiful residential shower. Now, one thing I haven't talked about in the videos, because I honestly didn't notice it and didn't know what it was, but we're gonna talk about it now. Look at this little blue guy right here. I'll bet most of you don't know what that is, because I had no clue. If you do, kudos to you. All right, what that little guy does, there's a little knob down below, that lowest knob there. When you get ready to take a shower, you turn that lowest knob on. And you start hearing some water moving, but nothing really happens. No water's coming out of the faucet. But water is flowing. It's circulating from your city water hookup back to your fresh water tank as, it, as the hot water gets to the, uh, the shower. Once it starts getting warm, that little guy change, that little blue guy changes colors, changes, changes to kind of a tan color. When it gets to that tan color, you have hot water. So the second you turn the water on in here, you have hot water. So nice little feature. Obviously there's a fold down teak uh, wood seat in there as well. All right, come back to this area. We have the two sinks, the dual sinks. His and hers medicine cabinets. This one even has an outlet in it. I always point that out because I love that. I would definitely have my little rechargeable beard trimmer plugged in back there. Outlets on both sides of the thing. sink for hair dryers, curling irons, or whatever else. I didn't turn on the vanity lights. There we go. And then look at the storage underneath. I mean, again, you just can't have too much storage in an RV. Yeah, they all pull way out, but just for demonstration purposes. All right, and then let's get to the back closet. Notice down below, you do have a safe back there. It's a small safe, but adequate. 
plenty of room for jewelry, some cash, El Pistola. Okay, a little easier access right back there to the safe. All right, and then our emergency egress door. Uh, so I was just at a rally last week um, for another brand and they have a guy there that does a great job of making people use their egress window and in so many cases this is a, a, a dangerous scenario. Um, these w egress windows, they're, they're being made more fashionable than serviceable, uh, and, and that's dangerous. Um, nobody wants to think about worst case scenario, a fire in your RV, but this guy does a good job at, the, at these rallies of, of saying, you know what, you need to think about this because there's X amount of fires every year and you know, um, things can go horribly wrong horribly fast. Newmar uh, took that to heart and a couple of years ago came out with the egress door and they've made it a little better obviously in 18 with the uh, telescoping ladder that comes out of there um, if you haven't seen this there's a separate video that will link to this one to do the egress uh, door so we're going to do that on all of our coaches that have the egress door we're just going to have a little separate uh, video where we actually demonstrate that all right moving on I know you want to see the outside as well. Hopefully you like seeing the inside first. Let's get to that outside and take a good look. Hi folks, Chris Anderson with Mount Comfort RV. It's a beautiful sunny day. By the way, we're in Indianapolis, Indiana. People tell me to mention that and I always forget. Uh, we're just, it's technically Greenfield, Indiana, but it's five miles outside of Indianapolis. So just east of Indy, uh, right on I-70 if you're looking for us. So uh, we have a beautiful interstate presence, so you can't miss us in, the, in that regard. We're into the outside of this 4369 Dutch Star now. This is a 2018 model. I'll start at the front go all the way around it. I'm sure I'll miss a couple little things, but we try to be pretty thorough with these. We did option in the chrome mirrors. And in fact, we had the entire stainless package on this coach, which is a pricey little package, but it's gorgeous. Your steps, the lower six inches or so of your baggage doors, your, uh, your grill on the back, all has that nice shiny look to it. When you, when you take the time to wash one of these, it looks like a million bucks. That's a, that's a wonderful thing. This little guy right here, this is the flagpole holder, comes with the little, uh, again, stainless uh, unit that slides in there and gives you a spot to display whatever flag you want to display. There's those side cameras we talked about on the inside. Very large tires. These are the 365-70R 22.5. Big tire, smooth ride is what it usually translates to. Now, you don't want a size 12 shoe on a size 10 foot, but with this 43 foot behemoth that is the appropriate size shoe for it and it has a wonderful ride alcoa aluminum rims again those polish up beautifully we have dual fuel fill so we can fill this coach from either side that's nice when you're pulling into that pump and the wrong sides open sometimes when you have a coach that only uh only fuels from one side oh i forgot the keyless entry let's go back a step back it up nice grab handle you put a five digit code in right here that is your uh, unlock code. You can unlock or lock your baggage doors. You even have a little doorbell from here so you don't have to take your key with you all the time. Nice feature. All right, let's get to the storage. Behind door number one, we have the Dometic freezer slash refrigerator. Okay, so this pulls out, this unlocks. Look at the storage inside. And even if your slide room's out, this still pulls out. Okay. These do have the little buttons up here as well that turn the light, there it is, that turn the light on and off as you open the door. So those are LED lights in there. Probably hard to tell because it's so sunny today, but actually there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of light in here when you light this up at night. You can see it as a raised rail chassis. You have tremendous storage underneath that rail. This is the star platform um, on a Spartan chassis from uh, Newmar. You can see I always try to point out these gussets that are kind of at a 45 degree angle back towards the lower rail. What that does is all the way to the sidewalls and the roof and the air conditioners and the cabinets and all that, instead of just 
being right on the outside, it puts it back towards the center, it lowers your center of gravity, gives you a better ride and more support. That's what those do. It's hard to see. I, I would love to go to the factory one day. We're gonna work that out to where we go to the factory and we um, do a, a video on the Star platform before they build this big box on it. This big, beautiful box makes it hard to see all the guts behind it. So really thick insulated doors, automatic locks on these. These are aluminum, by the way. Okay. Look up top, we have a 40 inch Sony TV on a pullout arm. It swivels both directions and a Bose sound bar underneath. This window does have a little window awning. Of course, we have slide toppers uh, and we'll get to the Gerard awnings in a few minutes. We optioned in a pass-through storage tray. This tray will go in and out either side. Very easy operation because what you need is always in the middle. Just a rule of RV. All right, moving on. Step back here. Here's our, where we empty our central uh, vac bags. And then we option in a second tray that's the half tray. It goes to the center. Okay. We have some controls in here for slide rooms and awnings as well. Those are some, some control boxes. All right, this has always been um, a compartment that not everybody utilizes. Most RV manufacturers put the water tank somewhere just in front of the rear axle. But a lot of times this door won't even open. They don't even give you access to them easily um, because they can't make this into a big storage compartment. Um, Newmar feels that, you know what, even though it's only five or six inches of space, let's give them the space. This year they even put in the little shelves. I could definitely see myself with you know my WD-40 cans, my roll of duct tape, got to have duct tape, um, you know, some tools, that type of thing in this compartment. It's actually a very useful compartment. Then if you ever need to get to the water tank, you take out about six screws and your water tanks are pretty easily accessed. Moving on. Numar uses flush mount slides. This is again, one of the things they do that separates them from everybody else. Everybody else puts a big piece of plastic right here to cover the slop, to cover the, the gap, but that also is something that's gonna catch, especially on the leading edge over here on the front edge. You know, when you're going down the road, you have something sticking out, it's gonna catch wind, it's gonna catch rain, it's gonna, you're gonna get more wind noise. Their slide rooms fit back into the wall. It's a much better fit. It's something Newmar's been doing forever. We have a tag axle on a 43 footer anything 40 foot and above on the dutch star line has a tag axle this is a steerable tag now you don't manually steer it it does itself think of it like uh, the front wheels on a grocery cart when you start to go this way on a grocery cart the wheels turn to go with you that is how these work these will turn up to 10 degrees on a spartan chassis and it's fully automatic when you drop it into reverse or um, you're going um, above 20 miles an hour, they lock in place going forward. So it's just for your slow speed maneuvering to prevent some scrubbing on the tires. It does help your turning radius just a little bit. Okay, we have right here a fill for our DEF, diesel exhaust fluid. Um, this is part of the after treatment of the engine. This helps us control emissions. All new diesels have this. Um, anything made since about two, any engine made after 2010 should have this. Uh, one thing Newmar changed this year is it is fillable from either side. So we can fill it right here or from the other side because more and more you're getting DEF on the pump. Now this is much ado about nothing to the RVer. Um, most people fill this tank two or three times a year. That's how little it uses. It's about one gallon for every 50 gallons of fuel that you use. So not a lot of DEF is, is used. Any questions on that, don't hesitate to call. These are our chassis batteries back here. And then down here, these are our chassis disconnects. That's a little breaker. So if you're putting your coach into storage and it's not plugged in, you can click those off so your batteries don't uh, uh, run down on you. All right, moving around to the back. As you can see, this is built on the K2 Spartan chassis. It does have the 450 Cummins power plant in it. And like all Dutch stars, it is a side radiator coach, which means we have engine access back here. And you know, the engines are so, so incredibly durable that you don't have to do much to them. And I mean, in truth, an RV application on one of these diesel engines, the engine's living a pretty easy life at that point. Um, but 
in the event that you or a mechanic needed to get to a belt or something along those lines, it is pretty easily accessed back here. Where if you do have the radiator back here, it is a little more difficult. Now most RVers, if they're being honest, don't work on their own engine. Um, and you don't really have to do much to these engines, but like I said, preventative maintenance, get into a belt, that type of thing. I did have a customer tell me last week they actually had a um, AC compressor lock up on them and it snapped the serpentine belt. Um, so it was good to be able to get uh, easy access. And even though they didn't fix it themselves, um, their mechanics certainly appreciated the easy access. Air filter fluid levels are back here. Even our Oasis system, that's our hydronic. Um, in fact, that's a little low. Um, probably had an air bubble work itself out there, but we need to add some uh, uh, boiler antifreeze to that. We have a 15,000 pound tow hitch on a Dutch Star. Beautiful molded cap. You'll notice there is no ladder on here. It just aesthetically didn't, didn't work, you know? Could we bolt a ladder to the back of it? Yes. Would it look that good? No. It's really the long and short of it. There's a lot of good collapsible ladders you can carry with you out there. This has that Prevost bus or Newell bus look to it. That's what they were going for. The ladder really kind of takes away from that. So just an aesthetics thing. Side radiator over here, you can see um, oil cooler, transmission cooler, it's all in there as well. There is that secondary spot to fill uh, our, our DEF. Here is that egress door we talked about on the inside. Like I said, there's another video for that. I didn't bring my key with me. This little compartment right here is a separate spot for your sewer hose, hose storage. Yes, it does have a little drip hole in there. So your sewer hose goes in here where it's not mingling with anything else, which is what we like. We like our sewer hose isolated from anything else in the coach. All right, move up to our wet bay. Now in our wet bay, we have paper towel holder up top. We have a light that comes on when we open the door. You see the pink hose down below, that's for winterization. This is a heated compartment. Whenever your hydronics are running, there's heat pumped into this area. So um, this is where a lot of your water lines are. So it keeps, keeps freezing from happening. Hot and cold water. We have a black tank flush if your black tank gets a little smelly. Whole house water filtration system. Our, our, even our shore power cord is on a reel. Everything is enclosed here. Your sewer dump does not hang down below the coach like it does on so many of them. It's in here in this heated area. So if you are in colder temps, I always tell people, you know, I can never guarantee you that you couldn't freeze a coach, even a Numar, but the Numar will be the last thing in the campground to freeze. I can promise you that. All right, 50 foot, 50 amp shore power cord on a reel. Anybody that's ever wrestled around with a shore power cord, especially if it's cold outside, knows how much fun that is. It's much easier if it's on a reel. That is uh, what we have there. Again, lighted compartment. Got a little uh, guy right here for a portable satellite dish or park cable. So um, if, you were, if you had the event that uh, you parked under some trees and your rooftop satellite dish wasn't uh, getting a signal, you could actually get one of those little portables, set it out um, and get a signal that way. Or like I said, some campgrounds have uh, uh, cable and you can hook up to their park cable. Here is the Oasis system. This is our hydronic heating system. It is contained in here. This heats our water. This heats our coach. Again, there's a separate video on this. Feel free to click on it. Moving forward. Here's the other half of that pull-out tray. That's our pass-through tray. More storage here and there's our tools for our central vac down in there. And batteries, 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 batteries. Okay, these are AGM batteries. There's eight of them. They're on a nice pull-out tray. AGM stands for absorbed glass mat. That just means they're not a wet cell battery. Um, it's a better battery, lasts longer. Uh, they are a little bit more expensive, but they're optioned in on this coach. So they come with it. And this other half of our fuel fill moving to the front uh, another window awning by the way up over our main windows there and one back over uh, the bedroom window also these are some chassis fuses in here Numar gave you the little fuse box as well for some spares just in case and then last but not least we have this little handle right here and we'll pull that handle and good things should happen up front Now the generator's running right now. You can probably hear it now that I'm close to it, but you probably haven't heard it throughout the whole video because it's actually very, very, very quiet. It is a 10K Onan generator. 
You can see our air horns are back in this area. That little red handle on the right hand side. That's actually our hot water line up to the front that we optioned in. That's so you can clean bugs off the front of the windshield with hot water instead of cold. That's going to be preferential. You fill your windshield solvent up here. And one thing people always wonder, on the 43-foot Dutch Star, it is a pull-out generator. Makes serviceability so much easier. All right, let's talk about awnings. Now with the Dutch Star, it's the first coach in the Newmar lineup, as you go up the line, that doesn't have what I call a bolt-on awning. You know, a big awning, and there's some nice awnings out there, nothing wrong with this, but they're not, again, it's not that aesthetically pleasing. You have those big awnings that, that run down the side of the coach. You have the arms and everything bolted to it. These are molded into the top cap. The front and rear cap are made to accept these big Girard awnings up on top. So it does a few things. First of all, it looks better. Second of all, it's a beefier awning. Uh, has some nice lights built into it. Um, and third, we have awning on this coach from right here to the very back of the coach with two separate awnings. Let's get those opened up. These have a remote also, but I didn't bring that with me. Notice the LED runs all the way across the bottom. That's a nice light when you're out here at night. Again, it doesn't, it's kind of hard to appreciate it in the middle of the day. And notice this awning is not just a straight awning. It actually bends in the middle. We optioned in what's called the Nova awning. By default on a Dutch Star, you get one Girard awning in this front one here that just kind of comes straight out. And that's a nice awning, nothing wrong with that. You can option in and get the second one just like it, or you can up them both to the Nova package, which is what we did here. Now what we did not do was the Girard window awnings. You can do Girard power window awnings. Listen, they're beautiful, they're wonderful. Man, they're pricey. Um, so we did not do the whole package on it. We like this package with the Nova main awning. These, these awnings are still manual here. They're very simple to use these window awnings. You grab that with the little shepherd's hook, pull it out, and hook it on that cleat right there. It literally takes five seconds. So to save a little, little money, uh, we, we went with the manual window awnings. So that's a little about this touch. Sorry, I just thought of one more feature I forgot to show. In the steps, they're all Corian this year. There's storage in them. How slick is that? In years past, that hasn't been the case. So another nice feature. Well, if you've watched this entire video, thank you. Um, I know it's a long one. I get uh, uh, people that love the more detailed uh, videos, so we try to appease that. Tell us what you think, what you liked, what you didn't like. We appreciate it. Please like our page. Please subscribe so you see the other videos. And stay tuned, because we're going to be doing a lot more videos. I'm Chris Anderson. I'm with Mount Comfort RV. Don't forget to ask for me. We'll see you soon.